Where does the road lead? All roads lead to decked out. Isn't that what they've been saying for so many years? To Oz. <laughs> All roads lead to Oz. Is that they might say that in that movie? They might say that. You, know, you just made me think of something. The old dark side of the moon and Wizard of the Oz. Now, as a person, I am very much interested in data, numbers, chances, likelihood. But what I'm more interested in is how when emotion gets involved, you think there's something to stuff that there isn't. There are lots of theories around why they sync up. But I always like to think that, you know, things don't occur in a vacuum. And if you step back and look at it from like a more meta perspective, how many people are there on this planet that have the ability to play movies and music in their home? Well, that's probably going to be a relatively large number of people, even back then. Now, the fact that this is one of the most popular, greatest records of all time and a classic, popular, well-loved movie that everyone's probably seen... The fact that it's those two things means the likelihood of people accidentally playing them at the same time has got to be higher than some obscure movie and some obscure record perfectly lining up. At the same time, has anyone ever lined up every album ever against every movie ever? Like imagine that list, a matrix, imagine that cross grid, all the movies across the top, all the records down the side. Zoom out, that is going to be the biggest grid you've ever seen, but maybe one day computers can crunch it and figure it out. Wouldn't you suspect that quite a lot of stuff would unintentionally light up and it would be like, oh well that movie over there from 1947 lines up with this album from 2003. Perfectly. How did that happen? Where, the fact that the two things are quite popular to me just suggests it's that increased likelihood of those things happening at the same time. And then does it line up perfectly? There's a lot of beats that it hit, but there's also moments where it's not quite lining up. If you want it to line up, you'll notice the beats and the rhythms it hits. But there's also moments in the movie where things happen on screen or the scene changes where it doesn't quite line up with the record. So there's also a bit of selectiveness going on in there too. It's really easy to let the emotion of it and sort of romanticize the notion that there's something special happening there. But honestly, I think it's just like a statistical quirk because lots of people make movies and lots of people make records and there's a lot of data there. And you also get to pick out which parts you want to sync up. It, there was no prior written agreement that when the song changed, the scene changes. When a character walks, their walk has to match the beat. You'll be able to selectively pick out the parts that you want to synchronize up in your mind. Right? You get to pick, cherry pick, the stuff that fits the story. And it's a really cool thing that they sync up. I'm not knocking it. I think it's awesome and a cool cultural thing, but I don't think there's anything actually special about it. I don't think there's anything significant. A lot of stuff in life, I feel like, when you talk about the odds of something happening and you're relating it to there being some sort of special meaning behind that, I think you're misleading yourself. I think a lot of stuff, there's there's a lot of data, there's a lot of variables, and you can just happily pick these things out and put them together, right? I'd be more impressed if someone went, hey, random movie, blah, 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 and random record, da, 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 da. They're gonna line up, bam. Wait, wait, you've never seen that movie? You've never heard that record? And they, they lined up? What a coincidence. If someone did that out of the blue, that'd be kind of remarkable. But then imagine you asked every person on the planet to name a random movie and a random record, and then... Someone's gonna pick two where they just happen to line up. That's the way I think about so much of that stuff. Whenever something really odd, quirky happens, it's like, well, like step out of the situation and think about the meta of it. How many other people are participating in this? How many data points are there? How much likelihood is there for something to line up and match up at some point? Isn't there a sync with Clockwork Orange? Probably. And, and you know, once people know about one movie that syncs, they're gonna start looking for others. Many movies follow the same general story structure. So if an album syncs with one, it'll probably sync with more. Carl, that's a good observation that they follow a story structure, as can some records. Some record, like Dark Side Against the Moon is a conceptual record. It has a start and an end. It's in a ways one big song. So it will probably have some similar structures to that kind of storytelling. And that's the thing. They're both forms of human art. So they're going to have elements that perhaps overlap. Doesn't Wizard of Oz have a soundtrack? You have to mute it when you sync it up. There's already going to be, just happens that the music is written at the same tempo as Dark Side of the Moon, and that gives it way more chance of syncing up. I mean, what are the chances of some weird experimental noise music that messes around with tempo and does all sorts of wacky stuff syncing up with uh, a movie? Probably less, I'd imagine. There's so many stories from the war where clocks stop working when a family member died. I've lost counts as Curls of Doom. 
Yeah, so okay, so in a war where a lot of people are dying, but also in a time period where clocks happen to break down, these days with our smartphones in our pockets, we, we don't encounter a clock stopping, but when they were physical object, they would stop more, right? That would be really weird if you had a lot of examples of that happening today with like digital f clocks on your smartphone. Someone died and the digital clock on your phone stopped working. That's kind of weird. If you had a bunch of stories like that, Hey, I'd be I'd be struggling to wrap my head around that at first. I'd say, wait a minute, is this a common thing that our clocks stop working on our phones? If it turned out, yeah, actually, there's a bug in the code of the latest updates, so and now it's happening a lot, then you're like, ah, oh, okay, look, there's an explanation. But look, that seems kind of unlikely. But back then, these were objects that probably broke a lot. So it's about putting it into perspective. If you ask them, like, how many times a year does your clock stop, and you have to fix it? I don't know because I weren't around back in those times. Let's say it's the 1940s. But maybe clocks would just stop working six, seven times a year. Then when a whole country is at war, well, that's a lot of people that are participating in this now. And so the chances of someone you know dying or a family member dying, again, you can cast the web further. Is it a family member? Is it someone you know you're close to? Is it your neighbor from down the street? And then the odds, they go up. Let's say that clocks broke down a couple of times a year and you've got a whole country at war and everyone's got a clock in their house, then it's going to happen on occasion. It could happen multiple times during a war. Now imagine having the complete data, imagine having the complete understanding of the situation. You'll probably find most stuff just happens at complete regularity. If you could actually calculate, you had all the variables, all the knowledge, all the people going to these locations, what was happening, how much firepower and destruction there was going to be in that location and how many people had clocks and you had the complete information, you could see the statistical probabilities playing out. It would probably be exactly what it should be. So what you're saying is humans are kind of superstitious by nature. Yeah, when it comes to reasoning, I think we have an inherent shortcut in our minds to chalk things up to a form of spirituality. Now, I, it's weird because I experience things on a spiritual level with music. I feel like I understand what spirituality is. It's, it's just when things just feel like this doesn't make sense in a logical, calculatable way. That's my experience with music. I know on a different level that it's all like neurons firing in the brain and a history of evolution that creates some deep synaptic energy with rhythm and sounds that's cultural. And, you know, the people that create the music are expressing it from the same perspective. It's not random assemblies of sound you're listening to. It's music created by humans. So in that light, it, it tends to start to make sense again. When it comes to, oh, what were the odds of that happening? And oh my god, isn't that spooky and creepy? Like, for me, it, it just, quite quickly, I just see it now after thinking about it so much that we just have this inclination to the sort of superstitious side of things where actually a lot of it, I think, is way more explainable than we realize. Accepting that some things are purely chance is not natural. I, I think saying purely chance as if it's like chalked up to some randomness, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that in populations, in large numbers of people, things will occur. There are enough variables that this thing will happen among a population. Someone on this planet will get hit by lightning multiple times in their life. But there's so many people that it might happen to someone, they might get hit several times in the same year. And when you hear that, you're like, wait, this person got hit seven times in one year? What? What's going on? But you then don't tend to extrapolate, well, maybe it was a stormy season in that region. And there's a lot of people that live in that region. How, do you ever, when you hear a story about someone being hit by lightning twice, do you ever ask, was there a lot of stormy activity in that area? If the answer was like, oh yeah, it was the biggest storm season ever, it kind of degrades the value of getting hit twice by lightning. That's, what, that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm like, what is that broader scope of information that tells you more about this than it's just some spooky... Thing that's got to be spiritual in some way. If you'd like to talk about data to my grandmother, she'd not be able to deal with it. It was a way of how people process death in tra a traumatizing time. Sometimes people need beliefs and superstitions to cope. Doesn't make the stories true, but sometimes people need to hold. Like, yeah, I get that someone needs that, but it doesn't make it right. It doesn't really make them wrong for thinking and feeling that way. That's not what I'm trying to say. It's more like I can understand the human psychological aspect of it. But that doesn't make... I, I think the more interesting thing is looking at the broader scope of the data and stuff. So did you enjoy the waffle? Want to hear more stories and thoughts? Check out the playlist link below if you want more videos like these. And of course, subscribe to the channel to catch future ones and go to linktree.assuma.co if you'd like to find links to all of the other activities that I do, including playing guitar, making music, Minecraft videos, and much more. Go check out that link.